Hello everybody and welcome back yet again to another drum playthrough review. Thank you all for tuning in and stopping by. Great to have everyone here and for all you who are brand new. Hi and welcome. My name is Nick. I'm a drummer and a multi-instrumentalist and we do videos like these so that way we can better understand drummers who are much better than we are. Analyze their technique into a nice and easy to digest form and use it so that way we can ultimately make ourselves better musicians. And we've got a really interesting drummer on the channel today. So this is the former drummer of a very well-known deathcore band by the name of Chelsea Grin. I'm sure you guys have heard of them if you're tuning into this uh, uh, video here. The guy's name is Pablo Viveros. Very well known drummer in the deathcore community. He actually also in Chelsea Grin did backup vocals as well while he played the drums which is pretty impressive I will say right there. And of course they've got now Baby J or Josh Miller as he's known from Amur, formerly of Spite and formerly of Amur, currently with Darko US and now Chelsea Grin. So it's definitely a very interesting direction that Chelsea Grin is headed in. But we cannot forget though that it's guys like Pablo that helps set the workers straight as far as what uh, Chelsea Grin is supposed to sound like. So let's go ahead and jump in. Let's take a look and see what Pablo's got in this uh, playthrough here. I haven't really watched a whole lot of his playthroughs, but I do know he's a good drummer and I do know he's got a lot of excellent technique. So let's dive right in, shall we? But first, did you guys know that according to the metrics, only about 6.3% of the people watching this video right now are subscribed to this channel? Come on, guys. Hit that subscribe button. Join the community. We got a lot of great content and a lot more fun content coming along the way. So stick around, hit subscribe, and be a part of the journey. All right. Well, without further ado, ladies and gents, let's jump in. Now, I'm pretty sure that's Tom Barber on vocals right now. Open this I can't hear it too well. Oh, shit. But this is definitely one of their most popular songs. But yeah, definitely the drums sound very nice and tight right here. Oh, definitely on the beat it sounds really good. But as you see, that is tough to do. I will say that because I used to do vocals and drums in my band at one point. It's very tough to get proper screaming technique down when you're playing drums. And the fact that he's doing that is really good. It definitely looks very nice and tight. Sounds really good on vocals too. You can just hear him going like. And the snare sounds really good, I will say. It sounds really good. Just looking at what his leg technique is doing, I can't see it too well, but it looks a lot like his full leg motion, really. A lot of wrist motion. A lot of good cymbal work, I will say. It looks really nice and tight. And he's got a good energy about him too. Yeah, his energy is definitely on point here. Even when he goes faster too, it's very nice and smooth. Oh. That looks so good. And it's a 
good heavy song too, so that's the best part. The fills look really good and clean. Classic breakdown. This is the breakdown they are known for. It's very nice and tight, like I say. Yeah, it looks a lot like just full leg motion, really. Oh, that was really good. That was really good. I liked that a lot. All right, well, great job, Pablo. Let's go ahead and jump into the review and just discuss his technique a little bit because there is quite a bit that we can learn from this guy. Excellent, excellent playthrough. I liked that a lot. So what he was doing on his hands... A lot of wrist technique, as per usual with most drummers, honestly, nowadays. Really good solid technique, really good power that comes with wrist technique, and also speed if you want it to be. The really cool thing about wrist technique, and I know I've got a lot of videos where I do talk about wrist technique, and it is a technique that I personally like to use a lot, and it is a technique that's honestly used by a lot of metal drummers, mainly for a couple of reasons. The best parts about wrist technique are the fact that it is so variable as far as your power is concerned, it is so variable as far as your speed is concerned, and just the overall reliability of it is something that just is unmatched. So, what do I mean when I say the reliability? ability of wrist technique is unmatched because we already know about the other two but what about the reliability well the thing is wrist technique is just reliable in this fact that you know that it's going to be powerful no matter what you do with it because you're using a much larger muscle group that powers your wrist you're going to be able to very beneficially use that to your advantage because it's a very consistent technique. You can have wrist technique be really nice and light if you'd like it to. And the cool part about that is that's consistent as well. As long as your wrist technique is really nice and light and you're being able to use it in all sorts of dynamic ranges, it's very consistent. If you are using wrist technique in pretty much one solid dynamic range and you're just in the, you know, fortissimo range or even more, then yeah, it's still just as reliable. It's just as consistent. It doesn't change. It's absolutely fantastic. So that's why I really do champion wrist technique a lot for me personally, just because it's just such a fantastic and, you know, driving technique. And it can also at the same time have a dual side of being nice and slow and soft and mellow. And I just think that as drummers, we need to be able to kind of be fluid with that. I know that's a really weird way to wear it, but bear with me. When it comes to these really power centric techniques that someone like Pablo is using, where he's using a lot of wrist technique, a lot of full leg motion and all that, there's a lot of cool elements about that that derive a lot of power. But to every dark side, there is a light side. And so therefore, the other cool thing about wrist technique is that you can go nice and soft with it. And that's why someone like Pablo exemplifies it very well. He's able to use it in such a nice and tasteful way that it brings a lot of energy to his live performances and he stays consistent with his playing. Now, what are ways that you can build really nice and consistent wrist technique, full leg motion and whatnot that is reliable, gets the sound you want, and is also pretty quick and rapid? A lot of practice using titration drills that I've talked about before. You can review some of the shorts I've got on my channel. I talk about that pyramid exercises or even just trying to sit there and just play along with the metronome and just trying to hold out as long as you can just hitting, you know, with a really nice and consistent power. All that stuff is excellent for building nice and solid and consistent technique. Well, what a fantastic job he did. I did like that playthrough quite a bit. I am a huge fan of Chelsea Grin. So definitely, definitely. I think that was a very nice playthrough. Fantastic job. And with all that being said, y'all, that's the end of this one today. So thanks for tuning in and stopping by. Be sure to check out my channel and the other videos I have on there. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought down below in the comments and start a conversation with me. And with all that being said, that's the end, guys. So cheers. Have a great rest of your night. And God bless.